What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and for another video on this YZ250 build that I'm doing. Uh, so if you guys remember from the last video, I went ahead, uh, got the bike torn down all the way to the frame and cleaned up all the parts on it and even shined up a few of the parts a little bit extra. But today I'm super excited to get going on tearing down this engine. So I'm going to split the cases on this YZ250 engine, take out the transmission, the crankshaft, and then go ahead and remove all the bearings from the cases get the cases sandblasted and ready to get coated in a later video. So we got a lot to do, so I'm gonna get to work. Okay, so as you guys can see, I have the engine mounted up on the engine stand that I built in another video. So if you guys are interested in checking out how to build one of these, I'll have that linked at the end of this video. Um, I'm kinda gonna tell during this video if it's actually helpful uh, to remove certain things during the rebuild process. I already know it's going to be a lot easier to torque down bolts since it's pretty secure on here and it doesn't want to move around like it would if it was on the table. Uh, but I'll let you guys know throughout the process uh, how helpful it is to have a stand. Uh, but I'm also really curious what kind of parts we're going to find in here because we have the uh, Boysen aftermarket reed valves here. So maybe we got some other performance parts inside the engine. And I uh, also want to check the clutch, make sure that's okay, and the transmission since we were having some shifting issues. So I'm going to start here with the reed valves and let's get to work on tearing down the engine. All right, guys, and overall, these reed valves here look pretty good. Uh, and then a good way to check is just kind of hold them up to the light. And then look in here and see if you can see any light coming from the flaps. But I don't see anything there. So I think these are still in pretty good shape and can be reused. All right. So if you guys look down in here, there is some dirt. Uh, so it's probably getting past the air filter. So that's not a good sign here early on. All right. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove the cylinder head. It has uh, bolts all around it. So I like to do everything that has bolts all around it in a star pattern just to remove the force evenly. And then especially important on a cylinder head, I'm gonna do about a half turn on each bolt at a time until they're loose all the way. All right guys, now we're gonna go ahead and remove the power valve cover here to get to the other cylinder bolt on this side that's under this. I also took off the water pump when I was mounting the engine up off camera, just the housing here because it wasn't allowing, it was getting caught on this. So I had to remove that because of the little stem that comes out of it. Alright guys, so we got the cylinder off and it actually looks really good. So you could see, still have some of the cross hatching on there. It might be hard for you to see, but the cross hatching is still pretty prominent, which means there wasn't a ton of wear on the cylinder. And if you actually flip it over, you can see there's some rough raw metal and that's evidence of uh, some port work being done in the transfer ports. So overall, pretty happy with the cylinder. All right, I just remembered I forgot to drain the oil. So I put this uh, oil catcher here and it fits perfectly under the engine stand if you just put a few blocks of wood under there. All right guys, so the not very much oil came out of here and it's pretty dark. And then the stuff that's coming out now almost looks like it has a little bit of water in it. So I'm guessing it was a while since this uh, 
transmission oil was changed. And then also on our magnetic bolt here, uh, there's like a little metal piece and some more metal stuff kind of worked onto there. Uh, so that's probably maybe something that was going on with the transmission that was affecting our shifting. Alright guys, now I'm going to go ahead and remove the flywheel here. Um, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use an impact to take off this bolt, but I'm going to lock up the flywheel just with this clutch holding tool from Tusk. Uh, this also holds a clutch basket. You'll see me use it again on the other side of the engine, but I'll put this down in the description for you guys. It's super handy when uh, rebuilding your engine. You'll also see me use a gear jammer on the other side. The reason I'm not using this to lock up the other side uh, it's just because when you put this on the other side, the force of loosening this bolt transfers through your crankshaft and it actually can throw it out of balance or uh, you know, mess up your alignment of your crank half. So a better idea to use this guy here. All right, guys, it looks like I don't have the flywheel puller style for that you need for a YZ250. So I called the uh, local dealer and I'm going to wait until I hear back from them on if I can get one up today. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to work around everywhere else so that I can until I can get that in. One thing to note when taking out your springs is sometimes your uh, springs will have different color paint on them and then you'll want to kind of keep uh, in mind where each color goes on here because sometimes they can be different tensions. But in this case, they're all white, so we're good. All right, guys, now we're going to go ahead and remove the crank gear here. So what I'm going to use to do that is use this little Motion Pro gear holder to lock it into place and this will just rotate into the other teeth and hold it there as we take it off. Um, you can use soft metal like aluminum or a penny or something like that, but I prefer to use this just because it has a nice little magnet on there that'll keep it in place when I go ahead and try and take it off of there. And it finds its way into the teeth a little bit easier. Also, when you're working with these, you want to be careful because some of these are left-hand thread, so just check your service manual and it'll specify. In this case, this is just going to be a standard right-hand thread. Now that we got that loose, it'll be able to slide off of here as soon as we remove our clutch basket. So we'll reuse this Tusk clutch holding tool that's super handy and we'll grab the teeth onto the basket here. And this will, uh, it's basically like uh, locking grip pliers, it'll just hold it in place, or vice grip pliers, it'll just hold the basket in place. You just don't want to get it too tight on here because you can damage the basket.
here. Um, I called around and I couldn't find any pullers locally. So my uh, motorsports local power sports shop was able to just pull it off with one of their tools uh, free of charge for me. So shout out to them for doing that. We were able to get it off of here today. Didn't have to wait for one to ship in. Uh, but now we can go ahead and remove our actuator arm and our stator. Part here and I'm actually finding a few more of those shavings that I saw on the oil drain plug so pull those out of there and just these little metal guys here so we're gonna look around when we take parts out and kind of see if we can figure out where these are coming from okay guys so after a little bit of wrestling I was able to get this fork out here and loose and then uh, get the shift drum loose a little bit so I can pull the shift drum out now and uh, just take off each of those forks here. So the reason this transmission is a little bit more difficult than most transmissions to take apart is because uh, you have your shift fork and then it's attached to this sliding piece here. Normally your shift fork is uh, loose on this piece, but in this case it's fixed together. Uh, so it's just hard to get the wiggle room to be able to take it apart. But after playing around with it, I was able to get it apart. Uh, but if you look at the crankshaft here, that's the next thing we're gonna take out. Normally you'd have to push this through with a case splitter, but in this case, for some reason, it's just super loose in this engine and I can just pull it out of here. So that probably means that these bearings are super worn out and the crank was actually spinning in these bearings. So it's definitely good that we got this engine apart. All right guys, well we're pretty much most of the way there. We got all the components out of these cases. We just gotta tear them down a little bit more, take all the bearings out, uh, the studs and uh, dowel pins and stuff like that. And then we can go ahead and throw these in the parts washer real quick and then get it in the sand blaster. The one thing I didn't find so far is what was causing those metal shavings in the crankcase right here that were on the shift drum and then on your oil drain plug that goes in here on the magnetic tip. Uh, so I haven't inspected the transmission yet, so my guess is that's probably where it was coming from.
All right, guys, well, all the bearings and everything else is removed from the cases, so we can go ahead, throw this in the parts washer. I'm gonna clean off all the dirt here and then uh, put this in the sand blaster. I just wanna clean off this dirt so it doesn't contaminate the sand in the sand blaster. Okay guys, well the cases are all cleaned up. All the surface dirt is removed from them. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just assemble them all together uh, like I would if I was putting the engine together to get them all closed off for sandblasting. That way I only have to tape up a couple spots instead of having to tape up like this whole thing to keep the sand out of the engine. Okay guys, so as you can see, you got it all plugged off with these powder coating plugs and some masking tape here. And now we're ready to bring it up to the sand blaster. It's just really important. I didn't want to get any sand in here because it would be a pain to clean all the sand out. And obviously sand in your engine would not be good for reliability. So I'm gonna bring this up to the sand blaster and we're gonna get it all blasted. Alright guys, so as you can see, we made really good progress on the engine today. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to be Cerakoting the cases, so comment down below what colors you think I should paint them. Well guys, this is as far as we're going to get in this video, so if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you're not already following me on Instagram, make sure to do so so you guys could stay updated on the build throughout the week. I post a lot on the stories on Instagram, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.